Good morning and a very warm welcome to Dundonald Parish Church. It is great to be back with you today and a special welcome to everybody that is worshipping with us. From people in Dundonald to people out with Dundonald, people throughout Ayrshire and Scotland and further afield that are joining us online. What has been lovely about this time of worship is all the emails and uh, text messages and cards we've been getting from people that are new to worshipping with us and it's just lovely that you have taken the time out to tell us who you are so thank you so much for all the encouragement. Can I remind people that all our services, all the ones we've done in the past are on our YouTube channel uh, so if you go to YouTube and you type in Dundonald Parish Church you'll see all the services that we've had since we started in March. You'll also see all the interviews that I've done with different Christians talking about different topics and you'll also see some of the thoughts for the day that we've shared on our Facebook page. What will soon be happening on the YouTube channel is we'll also be sharing with you some of our worship music that we have uh, written and created ourselves. Um, we're starting with Gordon Hyatt and we'll be sharing his music on Facebook so look out for that. But please do feel free to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. It is completely free. Um, it just means that you are aware when we put new things on um, our page. And I'll encourage you to share these worship services if you can. There's nothing better than sharing God's uh, word with other people, especially people that you know who might not know Jesus um, yet. So please do free, feel free to, to share our services of worship with other people. But thank you for everybody, uh, members and people that aren't members that have uh, taken the time to encourage this ministry. Um, a lot of effort goes into these online worship services. So when people take the time out to encourage us, um, it is, is great. So thank you so much. Now today I am delighted that, uh, to welcome Dr Stuart Weir. You will remember Stuart because he joined us uh, this time last year in our church. Stuart is the National Director of Care Scotland and he is going to be leading us in God's Word today from the Book of Acts but is also going to share with us a little bit about the charity Care uh, which stands for Christian Action Research Education. Now it's a Christian charity seeking to uphold human dignity and to support the most vulnerable people in society, engaging with politicians in the UK Parliament and assemblies and promoting Christian community-based initiatives. So uh, we look forward to hearing more from Stuart later on in the service, but we are really, really sad that we can't offer him the, the good old Dundonald welcome and hospitality that we're so good at. Um, so unfortunately, Stuart is just with us online, but uh, maybe next year we can invite him back into our church buildings. Talking about our church buildings, you'll know as a church we have decided to stay closed in phase three because really it wasn't deemed safe uh, for us in the building that we have. There would be far too many restrictions and um, it wouldn't be worship as we we know it. So we do hope and pray that there'll come a time soon that we can be all together. I know many of you are really missing the fellowship of seeing your Christian brothers and sisters in Christ. These online services are great, but there's nothing better than sitting around a table with those people that you know and you love and that encourage you. So we live in hope that we will be in that place soon. I just want to um, bring to you a couple of intimations before we start our time of worship. Just to um, say thank you to people that have given uh, money uh, to support the, the work and the witness of the church. Obviously, in this period, the church has been alive and kicking. We have been doing so many amazing initiatives to support our community here in Dundonald and out with. And I especially want to thank people that contributed to the Yemen appeal uh, a couple of weeks ago or uh, yeah, about a month ago maybe, I highlighted the humanitarian crisis in Yemen and we raised over £600 to send to a charity. So I, I really do thank you 
for supporting the church financially, uh, supporting the work of the church in these difficult times. For those of you that con continue to give by direct debit to the work of the church, thank you so very much. Um, if you normally give by open plate offering and you would like to change over to direct debit, then contact Sheila Tannock or Bob McMillan and they'll help you do that. If you're new to worship and you want to support the work and witness of the church here in Dundonald, it's a very simple way to do that. Um, on our YouTube channel, you'll see links to our Facebook and other things, but there's also now going to be a link that will take you to the Church of Scotland website and there's a giving section and all you need to do is in the drop box, um, click Dundonald Parish Church and you'll be able to give specifically to the work of um, the church here in Dundonald. I know that some of you are watching our services, but you're members of churches elsewhere. So we do know that you are already giving to your local church. So please do continue to do that. But thank you so much to all those that have given already. It is just so important that we're able to keep moving forward uh, in the work that we do for the church. And the main work of the church is to share in the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ, to be the light and life um, of Jesus to other people so that we can transform their lives. So thank you for giving. Let's now have a call to worship. God has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Let's pray. It is good to be together, God, in this place with these people at this time, together listening for your voice. In this time of worship, tell us about your kingdom of kindness so that we can seek it. Show your justice. We want to walk with you humbly, closely, daily. Amen. Let's sing our first song of worship together, A Touching Place, remembering that Jesus is in the world that we move. Let's sing together. Christ is the world in which we move. Christ, son of hope, we're summoned to love. Christ is the voice which calls us to care. And Christ is the one who meets us here. To the lost Christ show. Yes. 
his friends a touching place. Join me now as we approach God in prayer. O oh God, your spirit draws us into your presence. And so we come, drawn by love, upheld by grace, to encounter Jesus, our Saviour. We know him as our master. We know him as our friend. In him we see the Father, whose love sent Jesus to us. Spirit, Son and Father, we draw close in faith to offer our praise and worship to you today and help us to see and hear you today. Holy God, you called all that is into being and offered humanity life in all its fullness. Yet we have allowed good relationships to be broken. We have become distant from you and our neighbour. At times we have failed to speak out for justice, leaving the voiceless without an advocate. To all who fall short of God's glory, you offer pardon and peace. So Lord, have mercy on us all today. God, we know that you are just and forgiving. So God, receive us as we are. Lift us up and call us again to be people upholding justice and peace. Help us today to receive your pardon and peace, knowing that all sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for loving us and forgiving us and helping us to grow into the men and women you desire us to be, living in the light and life of your son, Jesus. And hear us now as we come to say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our Bible will be read this morning by Nikki Penman. Today's Bible reading is from Acts 22, verse 22, to Acts 23, verse 11. Paul the Roman Citizen The crowd listened to Paul until he said this. Then they raised their voices and shouted, Rid the earth of him, he's not fit to live. As they were shouting and throwing off their cloaks and flinging dust into the air, the commander ordered that Paul be taken into the barracks. He directed that he be flogged and interrogated in order to find out why the people were shouting at him like this. As they stretched him out to flog him, Paul said to the centurion standing there, Is it legal for you to flog a Roman citizen who hasn't even been found guilty? When the centurion heard this, he went to the commander and reported it. What are you going to do? he asked. This man is a Roman citizen. The commander went to Paul and asked, Tell me, are you a Roman citizen? Yes, I am, he answered. Then the commander said, I had to pay a lot of money for my citizenship. But I was born a citizen, Paul replied. Those who were about to interrogate him withdrew immediately. The commander himself was alarmed when he realised that he had put Paul, a Roman citizen, in chains. The commander wanted to find out exactly why Paul was being accused by the Jews. So the next day he released him and ordered the chief priests and all the members of the Sanhedrin to assemble. Then he brought Paul and had him stand before them. 
Paul looked straight at the Sanhedrin and said, My brothers, I have fulfilled my duty to God in all good conscience to this day. At this, the high priest Ananias ordered those standing near Paul to strike him on the mouth. Then Paul said to him, God will strike you, you whitewashed wall. You sit there to judge me according to the law, yet you yourself violate the law by commanding that I be struck. Those who were standing near Paul said, How dare you insult God's high priest? Paul replied, Brothers, I did not realise that he was the high priest, for it is written, Do not speak evil about the ruler of your people. Then Paul, knowing that some of them were Sadducees and the others Pharisees, called out in the Sanhedrin, My brothers, I am a Pharisee, descended from Pharisees. I stand on trial because of the hope of the resurrection of the dead. When he said this, a dispute broke out between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the assembly was divided. The Sadducees said there is no resurrection, and that there are neither angels nor spirits, but the Pharisees believe all these things. There was a great uproar, and some of the teachers of the law, who were Pharisees, stood up and argued vigorously. We find nothing wrong with this man, they said. What if a spirit or an angel has spoken to him? The dispute became so violent that the commander was afraid Paul would be torn to pieces by them. He ordered the troops to go down and take him away from them by force and bring him into the barracks. The following night the Lord stood near Paul and said, Take courage, as you have testified about me in Jerusalem, so you must also testify in Rome. Let me be.
Good morning, it's great to be back with you almost a year to the day since I was with you in Dundonald. It's a real privilege to be able to share with you. Um, whilst we're still partially locked down, <clears throat> we can um, engage in this way. So thanks so much. Well, you've already uh, had the scripture reading for today where it's a very interesting and turbulent uh, story from the book of Acts. And actually the precursor to the reading is such that uh, Paul has come to Jerusalem and actually he's gone to pay a vow to God and he's gone to the temple to purify himself, to make a sacrifice. And he'd been seen even prior to going into the temple hanging out with a certain Greek, with a Gentile. And the mob had been riled in Jerusalem against Paul. Rumours had been going back and forward. And so they assumed after seeing him going into the temple and on another occasion being in the presence of this Greek that the Greek had also gone into the temple with him in all their fury all of the rumors had merged together and they ran in there and, and dragged him out forcibly out of the temple and the Roman barracks were involved and there was a tribune involved and he um, arrested Paul and it was a riot. And Paul managed to persuade to this Roman tribune, can I speak to the mob? And as Paul speaks to the mob, they, they go wild. They throw their, they tear their clothes. They, they're infuriated at the message of Jesus. And then we have our passage, the part of the story that you, you've heard already uh, this morning. And so this is a fascinating story on so many levels. It's, I find it curious that the last half of the book of Acts gets com almost completely ignored by Christians today compared with the front half of the book of Acts, which includes Pentecost and those initial missionary journeys. But the latter part of the book of Acts is almost like a case study in how public the Christian faith ought to be, how... Uh, we ought to have a public faith. And Paul is almost just this exemplar of what that should look like. And in the midst of this fury and this consternation, Paul is actually being uh, beaten up, uh, by a, torn to shreds by a mob. And it is Paul's quick wit and his cultural sensibility, actually, that he, kn he knows that he can ask and do certain things that he can use certain things to his advantage. The first thing is, he says to the Roman, he says, is it, is it legal for you to, 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 to bind, to shackle a fellow Roman? And the centurion is concerned because it's against Roman law to, to shackle up a fellow Roman. He's like, well, hang on a minute. I bought my, my Roman citizenship with a large amount of money goes his boast. And Paul's like, well, I was born one. Almost trumping the Roman centurion, the Roman guards, um, almost stripes on his, on his shoulder. And let's pause at that moment. Here's a, a hate situation where the mob has gone wild against Paul. There are a religious, not just undertones, but there are religious concerns and they are tearing this human being alive. And the Romans have to kind of react to this turbulence, to this civil disorder. And in that moment, Paul uses the fact that he is a Roman, uses his Roman rights to become 
unshackled all of a sudden and for the Romans to be concerned that they had overreached themselves in this scenario. Here's an example of a Christian involved in uh, a, civil, a civic dispute, a public disorder, not, not that he created it, but he was wisely able to craft in his own rights into the situation um, in a very clever way that gets the Romans thinking differently about the situation that's currently unfolding. The second part is when he ends up being brought into, into the latter part of the reading where he's brought into this almost religious scenario where you've got the Pharisees and the Sadducees and Paul and they're questioning him and they're questioning his new Christian theology which is just not matching up with their um, very strict Jewish theology and, and it's creating problems and he uh, very shrewdly throws a cat amongst the pigeons that this is a situation to do with the resurrection of the dead and of course the Sadducees don't re recognize the resurrection of the dead but the Pharisees do and then they start beating each other up the Pharisees and Sadducees that make up the Sanhedrin start beating each other up over Paul's theological incendiary that he throws in there and so here we have an example of a very um, fleet of foot and clever Christian who is able to use his religious background when it um, works to his advantage. He is able to use his civic, his cultural background and his citizenship, his cultural citizenship when it benefits him too. And this scenario is fascinating because in the end, the Lord endorses all that Paul has done. He has spoken up for Jesus. He has talked about the resurrection of the dead. He's talked about this Jesus whom he has met. And all of this has riled the Jewish mob in Jerusalem and, and caused the Romans a, a real headache to try and police. Here is a Christian that is able to weave in his rights and his cultural understanding of the day into a very disturbing situation in a live environment. Paul is so fleet of foot here, it is almost enviable, but it, it gives us an example of something to take note of. And here is where the current situation in one aspect of Scotland's life uh, comes to bear. There is a new bill in play. Some of you that get our mailings and our messages and our emails will be aware of this, that there is a new hate crime and public order bill in the fray. The, the consultation period is now over. We've sent a, a, a robust but also very clear and constructive response to the Justice Committee. And this bill has some concerns surrounding it in that it would currently, as it is looked on from um, the Scottish Police Federation and the Scottish Law Society and other groups within society, including ourselves, that say, hang on a minute, this new bill has the potential to curb, significantly curb, freedom of expression in Scotland, freedom of conscience, freedom to think in a different way with a different worldview. So all of a sudden, religious and non-religious groups uh, have a potential difficulty. So whether you're a Christian or another re religion, but even the Scottish Secular Society are really concerned about this issue because to be a committed secularist is going to be called into question. Holding any clear and strong conviction can be deemed insulting, could be perceived to be hateful just by virtue of having a different world view and we're really concerned about this because we do have a different world view from the majority of people in our country and so this is our chance to be salt and light this is our chance to speak into Scottish society and say hang on a minute this bill is not shaped in a way that allows us to be here too to uh, be a different kind of Scottish British citizen in in this in this country. Can you consider softening this bill? And so some of you will have received this in the mail 
This is our new pack that comes out to Scottish supporters called Inform. And our first edition of this is specifically to do with this hate crime issue. And if you want resources to start reading your Bible on what God might have to say about this, if you want specific prayers about how to pray into this, if you even want a way in which you can act on this as an individual, maybe even as a church, why not consider emailing me? My email address is down below right now and request one of these. You will not be pestered with other things. I promise you I will only send you this if you're interested in this pack to help get you going on this issue of hate crime and what we can do about it, how we can think about it Christianly. Paul has given us an example here of how to be clever, how to be engaging and how to um, bring a Christian worldview to bear in an environment where it's not really accepted as fair game. The Lord appears to Paul after all this furore, after all this violence, after all this rioting, and he says, well done, Paul. You have honoured me. First Jerusalem, now Rome. You've done it here in Jerusalem. Now I want you to do this same kind of witness. Bring me to bear. Speak of me in a public way. Have a public faith, not just in Jerusalem, but also in Rome, which had essentially become like the capital of the world at that time. And so the Lord endorses what Paul has done in this episode. Good job. Big slap on the back. Be encouraged. Here you are in a lonely cell in the barracks. Keep going. Keep going. Well, now is the time for us to do something similar. To shape something similar for Scotland today. Can you and Dundonald and in the neighbouring villages think about writing? Think about praying into this situation where we don't have a hate crime law that impinges upon us that we can't meet publicly or that someone say well this bible this is a hate book it's time to act it's time to take our faith outside of the privacy of our hearts and into this world in, in a more public way will you join with us i hope so thank you for giving me the time to share from the scriptures to share what we're doing and how you can get better involved Thanks so much for all your support as well to us. You've been a massive encouragement to us. And just this last year, we've gotten to know you. So thank you for all of that. And thanks again for taking the trouble to watch this video and be part of this online service this morning. Well, let's take the time now to pray uh, for our world. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we're concerned. We're concerned about the shape of our society and the way things are going. We're concerned about this new hate crime and public order bill. Would you move in your providence? Would you move by the power of the Holy Spirit in our land in such a way as to alert uh, the Scottish government to take into consideration the real points of concern, the different groups, not just us, but the police, but the law society and other uh, groups like the Scottish Secular Society who wish to see uh, this bill radically softened, that the threshold for perception of insult and hatred would uh, be brought down low and would not have a high threshold. Lord, we, we, we come to you because you are somebody that hears us when we pray and can change things as a result. And that is why we take the time to pray. That's why we bother this interactive synergistic relationship that you've built and given us thank you so much that we can come to you about this issue thank you so much for how you helped paul handle this situation back in the day and you can help us now to do something somewhat similar um, even though the the scenario is is and the, the time in history is different there are so many convergences here that can help us and encourage us and show us the way forward Help us to be salt and light today in Scottish society, whether we live in a big city or in a village. It doesn't matter. We can play our part and you can help us to do that, Lord. Please help us. 
please use our influence in the higher and upper echelons of power in our society, that we may have a country where there is tolerance to live with the differences of belief and conviction. We can live with one another and engage with one another peaceably and not in a fraught manner. Thank you for this church, this local church, and I pray that their influence as a light on the hill with the basket taken off would be a beacon of hope to people all around Dundonald and surrounding villages. Thank you for being with us. Thank you that you're in our lives. Thank you so much for everything you've done, Lord Jesus. And we pray this prayer in your powerful name. Amen. As a church, we would like to thank Stuart for joining us today and leading us so inspiring in worship. I hope you have been challenged and inspired by all that Stuart has said to us this morning and may be inspired and challenged to walk more closely with your Saviour Jesus. We know that when we are walking with Jesus, it is the right way because Jesus tells us that he is the way, the truth and the life. So let's sing our final hymn together. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you? attend us. The love of God surround us. The Holy Spirit keep us. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us and those that we love this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>